Change can be one hell of an ordeal. It's one of the most common and relatable life experiences, yet is also one of the biggest causes of stress. It can be extremely intimidating and terrifying to go through a major life change. That being said, this same kind of change can act as a catalyst to all kinds of things. Freedom, success, self-actualization. Life is always shifting and moving, relentlessly even. But our ability to adapt to the ever-changing world around us and to use this constant shifting to our advantage to even create opportunities where lots of our potential lies, even if we aren't aware of it. Persona 5 tackles, well, damn near every literary theme imaginable considering it's 100 plus hour runtime, but even among those, change is definitely one of the bigger ones. The main game begins with the main character starting off in a brand new city looking for a fresh start, and the rest of our cast members over the course of the game go through their own internal change as a result of confronting their inner selves, flaws and all. There's a lot to be said about how going through this transformation grants them access to new powers, and how sacrificing old personas for newer ones fits into this theme, speaking of which, you should definitely keep a lookout for my boy Tay's video on the topic. I'll include a link in the description down below once it drops. But towards the very end of the game, things took a turn I wasn't prepared for. The base game for Persona 5 ends with our protagonist returning home with Morgana, while the rest of the cast remains in Tokyo, with the exception of our two graduates. Heartwarming goodbyes are shared and everything goes back to normal. A standard but still bittersweet ending. Things end up slightly different for our Phantom Thieves, however, in the Royal Expansion, a version of the game that includes brand new content as well as a new ending. You see, in this version of the game, the Phantom Thieves get infinite Tsukiyomi towards the final act of the game and have the opportunity to experience a world that could have been. In this alternate reality, all of their dreams come true. Ryuji's back on the track team and has restored his relationship with the rest of his teammates. Haru's father and Futaba's mother are alive. Morgana even goes reverse furry to shoot his shot with On. Each member is given not only the perfect life, they were given back lives and futures that had originally been taken away from them. But of course, this doesn't last and eventually the squad snaps out of it to take down the mastermind, but things don't sit well with them as they are anymore once they get their realities back. After their victory, Ryuji calls a meeting where he announces that in addition to our protagonist of Morgana, he'll also be moving before the next school year starts. After having spent his time in his dream world alongside his former track and field teammates, he became inspired to move closer to a physical rehab facility to get better enough to actually join the team. The group barely have enough time to process the news before An makes a similar announcement saying she'll be moving overseas to take her modeling more seriously. Haru and Makoto plan to move out in preparation for college, and Futaba passes her high school entrance exams meaning she'll be relocating as well, while Yusuke alone stays in Tokyo to continue pursuing his artistic career. Compared to the ending in the original game, this one hit a lot closer to home for me. I'd played the entire game twice before Royal had even come out, but the thought of the Phantom Thieves not merely disbanding, but moving on in life past their shared experiences throughout the duration of the game is a profound concept to me, and brought up thoughts of my own connections since my high school days, and how far I and many of my friends had come since then. The way Persona portrayed this aspect of adolescence was extremely extremely nostalgic. It reminded me of how we'd learned and grown ourselves before all going our own separate ways, but also made me wonder if I was actually challenging myself or making full use of my skills and experience. You see, the thing that snaps the Phantom Thieves out of their make-believe reality was that embracing their ideal futures invalidated the growth that they had gained over the course of the game. The various palace rulers challenged them to grow as much as the thieves do the rulers. The thieves learned self-acceptance, the power of conviction, and developed their own sense of purpose in the metaverse, giving them the tools that they need to handle any challenge that the world would throw at them. The true weight of that kind of power doesn't truly hit them until they're forced to choose between the world tailored for them and the real world. Choosing their authentic reality may have caused them to give up some degree of ideal happiness, but what they've gained through this unforgiving world has also allowed them to reach for heights that they've never thought possible beforehand. It's easy to fall into the trap of what if or if only, especially when we see the idea shoved into our faces over and over again all over our timelines. I love the message that this game is sending to its players though, which is that all of your accumulated life experiences experiences are important and valid. In the very beginning of the game, all of the Phantom Thieves were passive bystanders in their own lives, going with the flow and trying their best just to survive. But by the end of the game, they're actively creating the futures that they want for themselves, using the struggles that they've overcome along the way as their fuel. For the Phantom Thieves, the sky is the limit and I truly feel that the writers for this game feel the same way about its players. Each member of the Phantom Thieves has gained enough confidence within themselves to jump into a drastic change to their comfort zones for the sake of forging the future that they want for themselves. Hey guys, as always, thanks for watching. Persona's 25th anniversary was just the other day, so I thought this was the perfect time to get my thoughts out about one of my favorite titles of all time, even if I am a little bit late to the party. If you found this video made you think, or you liked some of the things I had to say, feel free to give me a like, or share it with somebody else you might think would enjoy. See you soon. Peace.